Assalamu alaikum boys and girls and welcome to the Children's Majalis program where we will be learning about the Battle of Karbala and the Day of Ashura and the events that led up to this very important and very sad day. We will take a look at the amazing personalities that played a significant role in this battle and the important lessons they left behind for us to learn from and to use in our everyday life. The agenda for each day will consist of a recitation and presentation of hadith e kisa followed by a recitation and presentation of Surah An nas We will then move on to the Majalis, followed by Matam, and we will end the program with the Ziyarat. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Should I tell you about the event of the Kisa, the event of the Prophet Kisa? He went to the house of his daughter Fatima and he asked for the Yamani Kisa. She covered him with the Yamani Kisa. His face shone like the full moon. Soon after, the others came to join him. Do you want to know who? Then came Hassan and greeted his mother. Salamun alayki. Ya umma, I can smell the nice smell of my grandfather. So he joined him under the kissa. Then came Hussein and greeted his mother, Salamun Aleki. Oh, um, I can smell the nice smell of my grandfather. So he joined him under the kissa. Then came Ali and Amir al Mumanin, Salamun Aleki. Of Jannah, you are great. I can smell the nice smell of my brother cousin. So he joined him under the kissa. Then, then Fatima went real close to the kissa. Oh, Father, I do you give me permission to now enter? Yes, she did enter the kissa. But when all five gathers under the kissa, Jibrail spoke up and said, Who, oh Allah, who are these luminous personality lying under the kissa? They are the family of Fatima, her husband, sons, and father. They are the ones who are perfectly purified. They are the Ahlul Bayt of Tahira. The Ahlul Bayt of Tahira. Salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil fajr. Assalamu alaikum boys and girls and welcome to the Children's Majalis program where we are going to be looking at understanding Hadith Kisa day 6. As you know by now boys and girls we always begin our Majalis program by listening to the recitation of the Hadith Kisa and then we discuss the facts and significance. So let us begin our discussion for today. So far, we have learned that Hadith Kisa is recited at the beginning of each Majalis, and when we recite it, the angels come and surround our gathering and only leave when the entire Majalis is over. These angels also pray for our forgiveness. We've also learned that Hadith means saying or story in Arabic, and Kisa means blanket or cloak in Arabic. The Hadith -e Kisa was narrated by Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam and the cloak belonged to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Can you remember which companion of the Prophet Sayyida Fatima alayhi salam told the story to? Can you also remember from where the cloak came from? We have learned that the Ahlul Bayt show us the best akhlaq or manners. 
We also learn that once the five Panjatan gathered under the cloak, the Prophet declares that they are his confidants and supporters. And finally, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says in the Hadith -e Kisa that they, the Ahlul Bayt, are from him and he is from them. Yesterday, we saw and began to understand that in the Hadith -e Kisa, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, began to make a dua or a prayer as soon as the Panjatan were gathered under the cloak. Does anybody remember how the Prophet began his dua or prayer? The Prophet began his dua or prayer by telling us how important the Ahlul Bayt were to him. He said that anybody that angered them angered him. Anybody that hurt them hurt him. They were from him and he was from them. The Prophet then continued his dua by saying, Faj'al salawatika wa barakatika wa rahmatika. O oh Allah, bestow your blessings, benevolence. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then asks for, Wa khufranika wa rizwanika alayya. Forgiveness and your pleasure upon me and upon them. And the third and most important dua the Prophet then makes is, Wa alayhim wa adhib anhum ritsa wa tahirahum tathira. And keep them away from impurity and flaws and keep them thoroughly purified. Girls and boys, can we have a loud salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, here we see that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, after introducing the Ahlul Bayt as his confidants and supporters, prays for them. It is very obvious that the Prophet would pray for them whatever he would pray for himself. Why? Because as he himself had said earlier, that they are from him and he is from them. The Prophet's first two prayers are for forgiveness and benevolence for the Ahlul Bayt. And the third prayer, it is of utmost importance. In the third part of the dua, the Prophet prays that Allah keeps the Ahlul Bayt away from any impurities and keeps them thoroughly purified. It is the Dua of Purification. The Dua for Purification of the Ahlul Bayt salam, is the most amazing Dua. And inshallah, we will see as we examine the Hadith -e Kisa further how Allah accepts this Dua of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let us take a look at what we learned today. Today we learn that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, makes three very special du'as for his Ahlul Bayt who are under the cloak with him. The first prayer that he makes is that he asks Allah to bestow his blessings and benevolence upon them. The second prayer that he makes is that he asks Allah for forgiveness and attaining his pleasure for both himself and his Ahlul Bayt. And the third du'a that he makes which is so very important, is that he asks Allah to purify them, the Ahlul Bayt, with a thorough purification. We will, inshallah, continue understanding the Hadith -e Kisa again tomorrow. And for now, let us continue with the rest of the Children's Majalis program for today. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخن الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله 
الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس الله الناس من شر وصوات القناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وجل فرجهم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل أعوذ برب الناس مالك الناس الله الناس من شر الوسواس الناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس سلوات Assalamu alaikum boys and girls and welcome to the children's majalis program where today we will be looking at understanding Surah Nas day 6. Let us now continue with our understanding of Surah Nas. But before we continue further with that, let us take a look at what we have learned so far. So far, we have learned that recitation of the Holy Quran has five stages, which involves not only reciting the surah, but memorizing it, understanding it, applying the concepts to your daily life, and teaching the surah and the concepts to other people. Some of the benefits of reciting the Holy Quran include getting to a higher stage in Jannah and being able to protect our hearts from being punished. We've learned that recitation of Surah Nas provides many benefits which include protection and relief. Surah Nas is Surah number 114 in the Holy Quran and it is the last Surah of the Holy Quran. And this Surah was revealed in Makkah. Finally, we've learned that in this Surah, we seek refuge with the Lord, King and God of mankind from the slinking whisperer who whispers evil into the heart of mankind and is from jinn and human. In today's session, we will start looking at the key concepts in Surah Nas. Surah Nas begins with the word Qul, which means say, and it is a command by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our previous studies of Surah Nas, we said that this surah is one of the four surah that begins with the word Qul, do you remember what the other three surahs are? In this surah, we are seeking refuge. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. What does the word refuge mean? Refuge means seeking shelter from danger or distress. You may hear the word refuge or refugee a lot, especially in relation to people who flee their countries because they fear that their lives are in danger. They seek refuge with countries where they feel that their lives will be protected. So, who are we seeking refuge with? Kol a'udhu birabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. And whom are we asking refuge from? Min sharril waswasil khannas. We will try and answer these questions in the next few days, inshallah. Now, let us take a look at what we learned today. Today we learned that qul is a command, which means to say. When we recite Surah Nas, we are seeking refuge. Refuge means to seek shelter from danger or distress. And we hear the word refuge or refugee often in relation to people who leave their countries and seek refuge in other countries where their lives will be protected. Boys and girls, this concludes our discussion about Surah Nas for today and we will now move on to the rest of the Children's Majalis program. 
اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو دا چلڈرنس مجالس پروگرام دس از دا سکس نائٹ ڈے پارٹ ون وی گو نو ٹاک اباؤٹ مینرز آف ڈرنکنگ واٹر اینڈ وی آلسو گو نو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا کمپینینس آف امام حسین علیہ السلام بریر حمدانی اینڈ ناف بن ہلال When drinking water, do not gulp it down at once, but sip it in three parts, starting the drinking with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and stopping the drinking with Alhamdulillah. Try not to drink from a glass that has a crack. If you do, do not drink from the side that has the crack. During the day, it is recommended to drink standing up. And at night, it is recommended to drink sitting down. When drinking water, remember Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his family and their thirst in Karbala. When you finish drinking, ask Allah to send his blessings on Imam Hussain alayhi salam, his family and companions, and curse on his murderers and enemies. This is the dua that is recommended when drinking water. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلوات اللہ علی الحسین و اہل بیتہ و اصحابہ و لعنت اللہ علی قاتلہ و اعدائہ In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Blessings of Allah be on Imam Hussain alayhi salam, his family and his friends. The anger of Allah be on his killers and enemies. What is a water bag or a mushk that is referred to often in the stories of Karbala? This is a picture of a water bag. You will hear mention of water bags often in the events of Karbala. In olden days, water was carried in bags such as this one, which would be made of waterproof animal skin. It is called a mushk in Urdu. These mushks can be different sizes. Some are small, like handheld ones, and others are large. Usually they come with a shoulder strap. You will see small mushks tied on the alam of Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. Those are replicas of a mushk or a water bag. Let's look at the stories of two brave warriors in Karbala. Their names are Burair Hamadani and Nafi bin Hilal. Burair Hamadani was one of the companions of Imam Hussain alayhi salam in Karbala. When Burair heard the cries of the thirsty children for water, he called a few of the friends of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and made arrangements to bring at least one bag full of water to wet the dry lips of the children. Burair and the gallant few marched towards the riverbank with determination to get water. They were challenged by the soldiers of Umar ibn Sa'ad who were guarding the riverbanks. He boldly told them that he was Burair Hamadani, follower of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and had come to take water from the river to Imam Hussein's camp for the thirsty children of Imam. The army of Yazid told them, We have not the least objection to you and your friends drinking as much water as you want. But we cannot allow you to take a drop of water for Imam Hussein's children. Burair was infuriated at this reply and shouted back at them, O oh, heartless brutes, you have no consideration for the helpless children of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, whom thirst is killing? So long as these innocent children do not get water, it is unthinkable. for any of us to taste even a drop of it. When they mockingly rejected his request, he said, If that is your final reply, be ready to fight us, for we shall not go back without water, whatever the consequences. Burair and his friends fought bravely and filled the bag with water, without drinking water themselves. They hurried towards the camp. With pride and satisfaction, Burair placed the bag of water at the feet of the thirsty children, who clustered around the water bag with shouts of joy and threw themselves on it. Sadly, 
The bag tie came open under the crush of the thirsty children who all wanted to hold the water bag and water started flowing on the dry soil. The children started to cry and started rubbing their bodies on the wet sand. Burer was saddened and exclaimed, Alas, Burer's efforts have gone in vain and the thirst of this innocent has remained unquenched. Let's look at another warrior, Nafi bin Hilal. Nafi bin Hilal was amongst the bravest soldiers in Imam's army. He had carved his name on the tip of every arrow he carried. On the day of Ashura, each time he released one of his arrows, he would say, I throw the arrow whose tips tell my name. After all the arrows were used up, he fought with a sword, killing 12 of the enemy soldiers. Finally, he was surrounded and his hands were cut off. Nafi is famous for his meaningful statement he made to Imam before he parted to go to the battlefield. We love those who love you and hate those who hate you based on our firm determination, weighed wisdom and calculated insight. What lessons do we learn from these two companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? To be loyal to our Imam and to give preference to their needs over ours. Did you see how Burair and his friends did not drink the water even when they were there? To bravely defend the Imam in his true cause. So for us, we need to prepare ourselves to defend our 12th Imam alayhi salam when he reappears and to always remember to practice tawalla and tabarra, which means love those who love Allah, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, and hate those who hate them. This concludes part one for the sixth night day program of the Children's Majalis. Please continue to listen to the Children's Majalis program during the 10 days of Muharram. Every day is Ashura, Every land is Karbala. Auz billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Welcome to the Children's Majalis program. This is part two for the sixth night day of Muharram program. Today, we will talk about the sacrifice of Imam Hussein's sister, Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. We will talk about her two sons named On and Muhammad. On and Muhammad's paternal grandfather was Hazrat Jafar Tayyar, who was a very brave warrior. Their father was Hazrat Abdullah bin Jafar, who was also known for his bravery. Their maternal grandfather was Imam Ali alayhi salam, whose bravery is second to none. Their mother was Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, the brave sister of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The night before Ashura arrived. Sayyidah Zainab called her two sons, On and Muhammad, and said to them, O oh my sons, tomorrow is the day of sacrifice. If you get near river Euphrates during the battles, do not drink the water, for Sayyidah Sakina will still be thirsty. The children replied, O oh mother, have faith in us. We are the students of Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. The day of Ashura arrived. Follow along with me as we recall the events of the day. On the day of Ashura, the battle began. Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam lifted the curtain of the tent and saw that On and Muhammad were following Imam Hussein around. She called out to her sons and said, O oh my sons, have you still not gone to fight? On and Muhammad said, O oh mother, Uncle Hussein will not let us go. Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam called Imam Hussein to her tent and said, My brother, why will you not accept my sacrifice? 
Imam Hussein salam allowed the children to go and personally made them ready for the battle. He helped them mount on two horses and sent them to the battlefield, watching them from a hill. On and Muhammad fought bravely, managing to reach the tent of Umar ibn Sa'ad. He wanted to know who they were and was told they were the grandsons of Ali and Jafar. As soon as Umar ibn Sa'ad found this, he ordered for them to be surrounded from all sides by the soldiers and to be pelted with stones and arrows. When Imam saw this, he called out to Hazrat Abbas salam, to come with him. As they ran towards On and Muhammad, they heard the children cry, O oh, Uncle Hussein, O oh, Uncle Hussein. When Imam reached them, they had been martyred. Imam Hussein salam, carried On as Hazrat Abbas salam, carried Muhammad. When Sayyidah Zainab salam, saw her martyred sons, she laid out her musalla and thanked Allah for having accepted her sacrifice. What lessons do we learn from Hazrat An and Muhammad? To always be respectful to your parents and obey them. To be loyal to your Imam. To be brave. To not be scared even if you're young, as long as you're on the side of the truth. Thank you for attending and listening to the Children's Majalis program. Every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. to be the best that we can be and from your tragedy we have learned how to live we will always stay strong standing up against what is wrong we are yours we are yours we are yours we are yours Assalamu alaikum ya Fatima al-Zahra 
ومحمد الباقر وجعفر الصالح وموسى الكادر وعلي الرضا ومحمد تقي وعلي النقي وحسن الأسقي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب الأسر والسمان ألمان 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 من فتنة الزمان السلام عليك يا سيك القرآن وقابة الإيمان وإمامنا وإمام الإنت والجان عزل الله تعالى فرجا وسأل الله تعالى معجا ودهورا ورحمة الله وبركاته Assalamu alaikum boys and girls and welcome to another session of craft time with the children's majalis program. The materials needed for this craft are a sheet of canvas, 6 by 8 or bigger is preferred, some masking tape, a pair of scissors, paint and your favorite colors will work best, and a paintbrush. Step 1. We are going to write the word Allah with masking tape. The first thing you need to do is to cut a strip of the masking tape about 3 inches long. You can then stick that as is or shape it with your scissors. This is for the alif. Stick this piece of masking tape on the right side of the canvas. For the next part, stick 3 pieces of masking tape about 3 inches long in straight lines. Make sure to leave space in between each of the lines. Refers to arrow 1, 2, and 3 on the diagram on the right. And finally, cut another strip that will go across the three lines at the bottom. And you can refer to arrow 4 on the diagram on the right. Step 2. For the last part, the ha, you can make a loop with the masking tape or just a small piece placed at an angle. If you want to make loops on the bottom, ask an adult to cut them out for you because this is tricky to do with masking tape. Step three, now you can paint the canvas. Make sure the masking tape is properly stuck to the canvas, otherwise your paintbrush might get caught. You can design the canvas any way you like. Make sure to let the paint completely dry once you are done. Step 4. Once the paint is completely dry, you can peel the masking tape off. Step 5. You are done. You now have your own beautiful painting of the word Allah. Think of what we have been learning about Surah and Nas and how we seek refuge or we seek protection with the Lord of mankind, with the God of mankind. You can keep this canvas next to your bed and anytime you feel worried or scared about anything, seek refuge in God. We hope you have enjoyed making this craft and please remember to share your pictures with us by emailing them in to childrensmajalis at gmail.com. We will showcase everyone's craft towards the end of the 10 days. And if you like, make sure to write your name and age beside your craft or behind it.